Welcome and in this video I'll be taking you through how to answer the IGCSE Cambridge Geography Paper 2 exam question, in particular the November 2024 question paper 2-2 and this is walking through how to answer the first 20 marks which were on map skills. So why this video? As you hopefully know if you've watched my series and the videos I post, I walk, th walk through how to approach the map skills question. Every year for paper two, there will be the first 20 marks off paper two will be on map skills. And so the skills do not change. So really this video is offering you hints and tips on how to approach these questions. So if you have opened the past papers in front of you, either as a PDF or printed up preferably, you can follow and complete. And as well, if you are answering another map skills question, which is the best way to revise for this, you've got this video, you can use the chapters in this video to go through and help you complete by applying one skill from this paper to another question area. And so just to recap what the map skills question entails, it's worth 20 marks out of a possible 60. It is compulsory, you have to do it. I would suggest you do 30 minutes and usually the questions are on assessment or rivers but they can ask questions to do with coast or tourism for this paper you will need a um, tractor a ruler a pencil sharpener and a rubber and as you'll see in some other questions a piece of string now before starting the exam i strongly recommend that you draw this onto your map a compass and not just a compass a 16 point compass with all the various bearings and as you can see here, how I've gone and drawn them of what each one is. And you need to learn that and also know what the bearings are, because as you see, usually you are asked a question on direction or bearing or both of them at the same time. And if you have this compass, again, the way of doing it is quite easy. It's just remembering what the bearing is and what the direction is. Also identify the scale and the contour line interval. You can see here, so the scale in this particular case is one centimeter on the map is 25,000 centimeters in real life, or helpfully as shown in the brackets, one centimeter on the map is 250 meters in real life. Another common um, scale is one to 50,000, which means one centimeter on the map is 500 meters in real life. So let's get started. Virtually all map skills questions start off with this. You have a figure on the exam paper and you have to identify or name certain features or work out the height above sea level. Now the first thing to remember is that the, what appears in the exam paper has exactly the same dimensions as what's appear on the map extracts. So before you get started what I would be tempted to do is draw the box or use a highlighter to draw the box on the map. And you will see if you took out your ruler that those four squares on the map are the same as the figure there. By drawing the area shown in figure 1.1 onto the map, that helps you focus and it gets you starting to think about the various different features or heights that you need to identify. So as we go through, we need to name the river A. So as you know, an A a river is usually shown as a blue line difference between a stream and a river is that it's much thicker so we can see here the blue line and it looks like it is the Rienza. The F probably means Fiume which is river in Italian but Rienza or F Rienza be fine. Feature B okay so we're looking for that line that follows the same so I think we're looking at the orange line so I take the key I get the orange line which is a main road so I'm going to put main roads. This key on this particular map is very easy because sometimes you might have like th you might have three different features and it's sequential, so you just match the feature and the order in which they appear. But look at my other videos to help you with that. Feature C, okay, so we're looking at this dotted line. The only dotted line I can see in there is a red dotted line, and that means path with signs. So let's continue. So we need to identify the, the spot height. The height above sea level of the spot height at D. So why is it 1412? So if you look here in the key, it says AK. So spot height is a black dot with a number next to it. And if I look here, D, I can see a black dot with a number next to it, which is 1412. 
So if we were to continue and put my answers in, we can see that we've done pretty well. All correct. Now, find the railway which crosses the map. Describe the routes of the railway. So that I'm describing, if I was, imagine I was on that train and if I was sticking my head out of the window, what would I see? What sort of things could I expect to see? So see that we've got the map and we need to identify the railway, which is a black line. Okay, so a few things that we can do on the map, maybe you won't be able to work that out if you're on the train, but you can certainly see it on the map is the direction. Does the train, is it in a straight line or does it meander like a river? And what's the relief like? What type of land are we going over the height and shape of it? And do we go near to or do we pass through any settlements? And can I see any landforms if I was to stick my head out the window? So let's take those sort of areas Right, direction, okay. So I've got my little compass that I've drawn on. And if you're unsure about how I did this, go use the chapters to go through to the part on direction and distance and I'll explain. But if I was to draw my, get my ruler out, in this case, my red line, I could see, right, the train line is broadly speaking going in this direction. And so it's going from northwest to southeast. Is the train line, uh, is it straight or does it meander? Certainly meanders. The relief well okay if it probably follows the bottom of a valley okay because i can see a river and so it's certainly not going there's no tunnels or anything so it's probably following the bottom of the river and like i said it follows the river and goes through the settlement of uh, niederloron and mitterloron lang or however you say those but certainly it goes through the first one and around this large second one so if I was to put those into my answers, I would say the route goes from northwest to southeast and meanders along flatter land at the bottom of a valley. It tends to follow the river and goes through the settlement of that one and around the other one. And if you look at the mark scheme, you can see that we've got more than three points. But sometimes in this case, it's easier to write more than three. You won't be penalised or anything like that. They'll just mark the first three. OK. So perhaps the next set of questions are, tend to be the hardest ones where you're having to draw the cross-sectional area and complete and identify um, certain features. Okay, so what can we do? So identify the feature of at X and name the assessment at Y. Well, this is quite straightforward. So the first thing you need to do is draw the two red lines onto the map. And they're helpfully have given you the six figure references to help you work out. If you don't know how to do the six figure references, again, wind forward to another section. But also, like in the first question, the distances here are exactly the same. You can see that with my ruler here. So we need to identify X. So I've moved my ruler slightly up. We can see that X is about 5.8 centimeters and nine is found at about nine centimeters. So when I label those two points onto my map, we can see that feature X crosses a stream and that is the settlement at Y. So remember, the nought of my ruler always starts on the left hand edge. I measure across on the cross sectional area. Whatever that distance is, I do the same distance on the map and then I work out what it is. Remember, if you have to identify the feature from the map and label it on, it's just the reverse and you copy what the layouts you've seen. Next one is probably hardest when you've got to complete the cross section. Now, this question is actually slightly, it's quite a straightforward one, and I think justifies the one mark. So we know the line stops at three centimeters, and I can work out the height above that, which is slightly above 1100 meters. So if I was to zoom in, I know three is roughly 1100 meters, and you can see the spot heights are going as we move sort of west or left towards the zero of my ruler, we can see the spot heights of 1157 and 1218. So we know the further closer to zero or west we go, the land is increasing in height. The next thing we need to know is the contour line interval, which is 25 meters. So if I'm close to the 1100 line, my answer was almost just above 1100 meters. So I know that all the thick, thicker brown lines are going to be every 100 meters. And you can see the spot height towards the center is 1205. So you know the thick line next to it's gonna be 1200 meters. So what I want to do is work out when those thick brown lines cross my ruler. 
so 21 millimeters we can see the 1200 meter line crosses my ruler uh, 11 millimeters you got the 1300 meter line and at two millimeters the 1400 millimeters the 1400 meters so what i need to do is then plot those two points there so you can see i'm going to plot 21 millimeters 1200 1300 and then again 1400 now i'm drawing slightly larger red dots because it's easier for you to see we can connect those dots and that's how i would draw the cross section and again you can see what the mark scheme says this i think is a much more straightforward way of responding to these questions sometimes it's really difficult and um and still want to mark okay so moving on the next series of questions tend to be grouped together under one question that you can see here so measuring distance degrees or bearings direction six-figure reference Usually, like I said, they are grouped together. So the first one, measuring the distance, I'm going to use to um, show you two methods. Now, the first one that says we need to measure the yellow road, the minor road, route number 44, uh, as it goes from the junction of the main road, the orange road, to the eastern point. Okay, I need to give our answers and method. Now, to do that, we need to mark on the start and end of our route again. I like to circle, get my students to circle this because then it helps them to focus on the start and end points. Then check the scale. So we know from the start that it's one centimetre, 250 metres in real life. And again, I might write that on my answer paper or on the map, have that circled. Then the first method, take a piece of string and put it along the road. And then whatever that is in centimetres, times it by 250 meters to give you your answer in meters and you've got a piece of string you need to do this method and this method is very simple again you start mark by start off with marking on the start and end points you check the scale and then you break up the route into as many straight parts as possible which i've done here then you take out your ruler and double checking the scale so yep you can see here that's the scale you measure along and we can keep on going writing down the distance as you go at each point add them all up and then times by 250 so you should get an answer that looks something like this okay and now we need to measure the compass and um the bearing compass and the direction and again these two questions tend to be grouped together and this is when you need your compass from the start so the first bit, you know where the start and end point is, you have your protractor. But at the start point, I'm going from the road junction to the point at the end of the map where it comes off. So that's the start point is at the junction. So I put my north arrow there. I would draw a straight line connecting those two points. I take out my protractor and I measure with naught at the top for north the bearing. So in this case, it's about 29 degrees. Then, if I put 29 degrees onto my um, compass that I drew at the start of the exam, I know it's closer, much closer to 22 and a half degrees than it is to 45. And so my compass direction, I'm going to write north, northeast, or NNE. Another six figure reference. So this one, again, we've got the box we were looking at. There is the feature of the road junction, and, and basically, again, I have to check this, yep, 4x4. Four four. I need to work out the four-figure grid reference. So to do that, I mark on the bottom left-hand corner of the grid square that feature is in. And then I find the numbers that are in aligned with the bottom left-hand corner of the grid square that feature is in. So in this case, it is um, 74, and then we're going up to 80. And I write the answer in. Now, for the six figure reference, I need to work out the third and sixth number. To do that, I take out my ruler and I measure to the center of that feature. And so, in this case, it's about six millimeters. So, if I divide six millimeters by four, five to six millimeters by four, I get 1.5. And so, because that is um, as you know, the third and sixth number is between 0 and 9, so 10 numbers. 
So every point is four millimeters. 1.5 is close, it's not even halfway along four millimeters. It is much closer to one. So I'm going to put one. If it was to two, then I would expect there to be that number closer to eight millimeters. It's not, it's much closer to um, four millimeters. Therefore, I'm going to write 1.1. And again, going to the top here, 1.75. Again, it's pretty close to one, it's not two, because two would be eight. Again, when you look at these questions, please do remember that I'm doing this from my computer. You're using your map, it's going to be way more accurate. And we check the answers again here. Next one, we need to describe the relief and drainage of this area. So again, I will draw on the box of the area we need to focus on, and I'm going to take each part of the question in turn. So we're going to start off with relief. Now, relief means the height and shape of the lands. How do you work out height? Well, we've got the contour lines, we've got the spot height triangulation pillars, and so really, when you describe the highest shape, just write down the highest and lowest points if you know what they are. And also you could work out the names of peaks as well, which is quite useful information. What is relief? Well, again, it's basically how the contour lines are shaped and moved. The closer they are together, the steeper the lands, and that will help you work out if it's hilly or mountainous. And again, here I've put a little diagram of the common contour line patterns. So if we go back to my question here, right, I know the top of my map is always north, the bottom of my mouth is always map is always south. If I look at the contour lines and the spot heights, I can see the lowest point towards the north is around 1100 meters, and the highest point is almost 1800 meters. As we go from south to north or north to south, the land becomes, or south to north, the land becomes gentler. It is mountainous. Assume anywhere close to a thousand meters is mountainous. It is a north facing slope. So if I put all those points together for relief, the lowest point is around 1100 meters and the highest point is about 1800 meters. Therefore, the area is mountainous. How do I know it's north facing slope? Well, the highest point is towards the south of the map. Therefore, if you think about that, where the north is, is angled towards there, so it's facing the slope. The highest point is facing. As it's going down towards north, it's facing north. Then if we look at the drainage, basically the drainage means is basically how much water is there in the area. So if there are lots of blue squiggly lines, there are going to be lots of drainage. If you look at patterns, the most common type is dendritic. And I put some information here. So what I'm now going to go through is just the various common different types of patterns. We've got this one, parallel, rectangular. You can see here what they should look like on the map, and radial. Radial is when you've got a central point like a hill, and then you've got the rivers coming or streams coming off it, or deranged. So when else you're looking at the drainage, you can look at other things, direction of flow, the relief of the lands, the width of the river and landforms as well. So if we go back to this map, we're looking at the blue dotted lines, which according to the key are intermittent streams. So if we look at the key here, yep, dotted lines are intermittent streams. We've got the springs, those little blue circles, and we know it's flowing north because the mountains, the rivers all start in the south. The blue line, the blue intermittent stream starts in the highest point and go downhill towards the north. So for drainage, many intermittent streams with springs that are flowing with springs that are flowing in a north direction. So thank you for watching. This uh, very quick whistle stop tour. Remember, a few little last minute tips, draw any boxes or lines from the figures of the exam paper onto the A3 map. Draw on a compass with bearings at the start, identify the scale and contour line interval, take it slowly and practice. Use the chapters, use the resources and apply them to other past papers. If you appreciate these videos, please do uh, like it or subscribe and pass on to your friends, more importantly, to help them as well. Thank you for watching.